Mayor Michael O'Connor has announced that the city of Frederick will be purchasing all of its energy from renewable sources by December 2020. Sustainability Manager Jenny Willoughby is with us to discuss the important environmental benefits of that plan and the other ways that the city plans for a sustainable and environmentally sound future. So Jenny, thank you for coming here today to talk to us and explain to our viewers and the residents about the exciting plan we have to really get a lot of renewable energy going here. Talk a little bit about the process that we go through to purchase our electricity and evaluate on a regular basis the, the best deal for the city and how we came to make the decision that beginning in 2020, we'll be able to get 100% of the city's electricity from renewable sources. Um, yeah, so every, I believe it's every year or two, our uh, electrical folks go out and find, um, they find contractors, they go through the contract process and figure out um, where the best rates are. And we try to include uh, renewables in that portfolio to figure out sort of if we can purchase uh, renewables and, and what rates we're going to get them at. And it just so happened the last time we went out, the renewables were at an awesome rate and we were able to lock in that rate for our next contract cycle, which is uh, December 2020 through 2022. And these are renewable energy credits. So for people who don't really understand the terminology, what, is, what does that mean? So a renewable energy credit could be wind or solar at this moment. And it's a, it sort of works like a banking system. Um, somebody produces wind or solar over here and you purchase those credits. It comes with a, a REC. And um, so what we did was we purchased the RECs for wind power and it goes towards our energy use. So we're offsetting our energy use here in Maryland with RECs from another place. So. And prior to being able to get this rate starting in December of 2020, how much of our electricity were we acquiring through this renewable energy, through these RECs and, and? Yeah, 0%. We, we didn't have any renewables in our portfolio except for the cogeneration we produced at our own wastewater treatment plant. Um, that was really our only source of renewable energy at, the, at that time. Um, and that goes to, you know, power that wastewater treatment plant. So we went from zero to 100 and we'll be at 100 for at least two years. We'll have to see as the new pricing comes out in the next year or so what, what happens after that. This is all in meeting some of the objectives of the city's sustainability plan. Right. The, the plan, uh, it sets a goal. Uh, there's an or, or uh, um, we, we set a goal <laughs> a while ago that said that we wanted to get 20 percent of our renewable energy um, or generate or purchase 20 percent renewables. And so we've gone well above that goal of, of 20 percent and just jumped straight to 100 because it made financial sense. Um, so yes, in, in a couple of years, when we go back out to market and we see what the, the rates are, we'll kind of have to see what's the best bet. Um, right now, wind is, is doing better than solar. Does purchasing electricity this way have any direct effect on how we use that electricity as a city? Does it change anything about our city practices? It does not change anything. You still have the electric. When you turn it on, it, it's, it's just, it comes through the same wire, the lines and everything. It doesn't change that at all. It just changes how we are offsetting our, our usage. That's all it is. Are there next steps in terms of the electricity side? I know there are next steps with regards to broader sustainability, but specifically on the electricity side, would be there next targets or things that we would want to look at? We are really um, pushing to update all of our street lights to LEDs and our electrical department is, they've been doing a great job finding our oldest street lights and updating those. In some cases, they're having to replace all the guts inside of the light. Um, and in some cases they can just replace the bulbs. Uh, it really just depends on the lighting. Um, and those have been saving us a lot of energy you know, costs. I've looked at the numbers and we've been able to save quite a bit. Even though our population has increased, uh, we're kind of staying steady with our electrical usage. And I think part of that is because of the, um, 
the LEDs that we've been able to change out for street lights. Um, and I believe they're also now in stoplights. Um, so we're really trying to change them out. That, that's our big push. Um, street lights are 25% of our total electrical usage in the city. We own our street lights, where a lot of places the uh, power company owns the street lights. So um, we're lucky in that sense because we can change them out um, whenever we have the resources to do so. But um, it also means that that's a, a huge chunk of our electrical use, at, you know, throughout the year. And then, of course, we're looking at buildings as well. We are doing some energy audits. Um, we did one for the Tally Recreation Center and made some of those upgrades. So hopefully we'll start to see those, um, those reductions very soon. Uh, there was a five-year payback period for all of the, um, the costs that we wanted to do for upgrades to the HVAC and, and other things in there, lighting and things like that. So it's one thing to acquire your electricity from renewable sources. The other is to look at your actual consumption and figure out what can we do to actually drive down the amount of electricity that we use on a daily basis. Yeah, those energy audits are going to be a big uh, help to us to, to sort of pinpoint some of the actions that we can do on a daily basis and also um, you know, any updates to equipment that might be needed. Uh, what can we do for the building envelope? Um, are there things we can do for the windows? Uh, Tally Recreation was an interesting case because it's a historic building. So we're limited on some of the things that we can do to the uh, outside of it. And then we're also limited on parts of the inside as well. There is a historic overlay, uh, a state historic overlay. So um, that was a challenge, but I think that we um, can still do some things in that building and, and reach some goals in there. How does it feel to be achieving some of these goals? I think it's great. I'm excited. We've um, taken a huge step forward and um, you know, we've been slowly taking steps forward, especially with the electrical, um, you know, moving towards LEDs and getting those energy audits. And now we've, we've stepped in um, into the renewables uh, field. I wish that we could put our own solar or wind on site. We just don't have the space to do it. Um, we have so much, so many other uses that are competing for the same space. It's difficult to say, you know, use 10 acres for a solar field when that space could be planted in trees or could be used as a park, um, it, it, a stormwater system. You know, there's so many different things that could, that we could use that land for um, and, and um, solar because we have these other options. I'm not sure it's the best use and wind too. Um, wind power, we don't have enough consistent wind here to really make that happen even in a building that's got politicians inside of it. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too much wind. No. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a challenge. You know, you have all these um, competing needs in the city and you really have to look at that. And rooftop, you know, we've always looked at rooftop, but you're limited on space um, when you have an HVAC system or something else on top. It cuts down on the usable space that you could put the solar on there and then um, how much are you actually offsetting and will it, will it really, um, will you be able to pay, pay it back in a reasonable amount of time before you have to replace the panels again? Is there a formula for how much space you have to have to get adequate payback? Uh, yeah, it's, it depends on the, the building footprint and what you're using the space for and then um, the folks who do solar will calculate for you how many panels you'll need to offset X amount of your electrical uses. And uh, in some cases, you'll need a combination of rooftop and um, parking lot canopy and uh, ground mount. And it, so it varies depending on what you're using the space for and how big it is. And I think this, this is why the sustainability plan that the city has is so broad because there isn't going to be just one, sustainability is not just one thing and solving different sustainability challenges aren't going to be accomplished through only single ways of doing it. You're going to need to pull different things together in order to really have a plan like this be successful. Everything is linked together. So when you move one cog, it's going to shift a whole bunch of other things down the line. So um, by choosing to go renewable, we've made that step, but then we also need to do these other things that will will gear us up for success in the future. Um, you know, the, the wastewater treatment plan is a good example. We have this really great cogeneration system, 
that could accept food, but the real problem is how do we get that there? How do we get the food there? So that's gonna require a completely different piece. Um, but I, I would love to see that kind of thing happen as well and use that to, the, to, the, um, to its full potential. People who want to read the sustainability plan? It's on the website, just on the city website. Just go to departments and sustainability, and it is right on that page. All the resources for the sustainability department, including the electric vehicle plan, the tree canopy assessments, all that's on there. And we have a sustainability committee that the public is certainly welcome to watch and participate in. That's right. We, eat, we meet the first Monday of every month at 6 p.m. at the Annex. Thank you very much for filling us in on this exciting update and we'll have you back to talk about other things as we make more progress. And it's great to hear and great opportunity to educate the people who may not know all of it. You're welcome. Thank Thanks. you.